Inter Milan are currently battling their neighbours AC Milan, Atalanta and Roma for the last spot to qualify for next season's Champions League. However, another route into next season's Champions League might actually be to win it. Of course, the winner of the other semi-final is going to be the favourite, but a win against their rivals Milan will give them a place in the final, and anything can happen. Their progress into the semi-final has gone largely unnoticed. So have we underestimated Simone Inzaghi's Inter? What tactics have got them to the semi-final? Inzaghi's preferred lineup is a 3-5-2, starting with a well-drilled defence. Although the team have one of the lowest dribbling rates in the league, Mkhitaryan and Barella's roles are to break the lines with forward runs. In games where Inter can dominate possession, this formation can look more like a 3-1-4-2, with the wing-backs often holding their position in the midfield line, and Brozovic patrolling the spaces in front of the back three. Then this moves into an asymmetrical 2-4-4. In the build-up, Inzaghi instructs his players to build up from the back with short passes out from goal kicks. Onana is very good with his feet and comfortable in possession, so plays an important role in the build-up phase. Onana will actually form part of a back four once the ball has become active. The right-sided centre-back will take up a position wide on the right and the libero, which is usually Acerbi or Davi, will take up a position on the left, depending on the position of the opposition. Bastoni will take up a position in line, making up a back four or he will move into a more advanced position on the left. Onana takes up a position as the right-sided centre-back. It is then Brozovic's role to occupy the spaces in front of defence, and be ready to move back and cover if needed. The position of the two wide centre-backs allows the wing-backs to take up much more advanced positions and provide the width. Although Inzaghi and his system might seem very rigid, it is actually a very fluid system that allows players to interchange positions in the build-up phase. As with most managers, Inzaghi likes to have a back two at all times during the build-up, but this means that one of the centre-backs is free to join the midfield lines and try to outnumber the opposition. It might even be, as in the case of the image, that there are two centre-backs in the midfield and Brozovic is covering the centre-back position. This can see Inter build up with a 2-2-4-2. The centre-back nearest the ball, which can be the libero, will move into the midfield between the lines because his distance is shorter. His position in defence is then taken up by Brozovic, and this creates an angle to progress the ball. Of the centre-backs though, it is most likely the left-sided centre-back Bastoni who will join the attack and create overloads on the left-hand side with Mkhitaryan and Di Marco to deliver crosses into the box. The way Inter break the opposition's lines is by the way that they position their three central midfielders. They rarely take up positions on the same line. Instead, Inzaghi instructs his midfielders to stagger their positions. It's usually Brozovic beyond the attacking line, with Mkhitaryan taking up positions beyond the midfield line, and Barella taking up a position in the opposition's defensive line. This creates passing angles necessary to break the press and cause the opposition problems. Brozovic will be involved heavily in the build-up in deeper positions, shifting across to the ball side to make up passing angles. This allows the centre-back on the ball side to advance into the full-back positions. So, combining with the centre-back, beat the opposition's press and the wing-back. Inter are one of the teams that have the highest number of crosses per game, and this is because they have Edin Dzeko or Romelu Lukaku in the box to aim for. How do they go about getting crosses into the box to such a high degree? This can be seen in their tactics. As we said before, one of the centre-backs will move into the midfield and operate alongside the pivot, Brozovic. This will give them a 2-2 shape. Then there is another two in front of them, so a 2-2-2. These will often move around so that they create angles. In front of that there will be the two wing-backs and the strikers making up 2-2-2-4. The wing back is wide, but if the channel to him is blocked, then it's common to see Bastoni or another player in that position putting crosses in from the half spaces. The targets are of course Lukaku and Zeko at the far post, in to rely on protecting the central areas on their press. The front two are responsible for pressing the centre backs and then remaining in that position so that they can cut off return passes in their cover shadow. There are three midfielders but what usually happens is that two midfielders will form a box 
with the attackers protecting the central areas. They will then be responsible for closing down the fullbacks. The third midfielder will drop back and pick up any of the opposition's midfielders. Or they can also close down the fullback on the ball side. This will leave a back five that will step out and press the player with the ball in the case of a long goal kick. These four players will work as a unit, keeping the distances between them tight. In the final third, Inter attack the wide areas and try to create overloads in order to get crosses into the box. Whereas the pivot remains deep, it is the role of the other midfielders to link up play with the wingbacks. Inter position a good number of attackers in the opposition's box with the two strikers, who are joined by the wingback on the non-ball side and then the other attacking midfielder. So we will quite often see four players in the opponent's penalty area. This means that the opposition will need five defenders to cover effectively. And this leaves space on the flanks, where as we said before, Inter push up the third centre-back, leaving two centre-backs back, with Brozovic in front. Their slightly lopsided 2-4-4 shape, creating overloads on the flanks. The other way that Inter find the back of the net is by using the strength of Lukaku, and at times Zeko. The ball will be played to Lukaku on the edge of the box, and this will be the trigger for Martinez and Barella to run in behind the defence for a through ball. In the final third, Inter will drop into a low block, with the wing back sitting back in the defensive line, and this forms a 5-3-2 for Inter. This gives Inter good coverage in the wide areas, but can leave them a little exposed in front of the wing back. When the wing back closes down a player, a centre back will cover the space vacated by the wing back, and one of the midfielders will drop back into the defensive line, thus maintaining the 5 3 2 formation. This can, however, look like a 4 4 2 when one of the defenders is pressing. Inter's aim is to block off the centre and force the opposition to use the flanks, where they will then close down using the touchline as a defender. Although Inzaghi has a reputation for being a very rigid manager, he has managed to create quite a fluid team with limited resources available to him. He has guided Inter into the semi-final of the Champions League, beating some opposition that he would not have been expected to. This shows that he is respected by the players and the clear idea of what is required in this team. If he were to win the Champions League this season, opinions will surely change very quickly.